SpongeBob is known for its creative storytelling and original plots. There are episodes like the very funny Wet Painters, the iconic Band Geeks, the scary Graveyard Shift, and the super weird SB129. However, naughty is a word you wouldn't usually describe a SpongeBob episode with. You could use naughty to describe Ren and Stimpy, and maybe even Invader Zim for some episodes. Outside of Nickelodeon, you could definitely call Cow and Chicken naughty. However, 99% of people wouldn't say SpongeBob is naughty. There is one episode, however, that is definitely naughty. Midlife Crustacean, AKA the Panty Raid episode. This isn't even edgy humor, where it teeters the line a little, and it's not like those jokes that are meant for the parents that the kids don't understand. The kids understand this joke. Before I get to the final joke of the episode, that being the Panty Raid, let's go through it. If you're like me, it's been a while since you've seen it, and I went to go watch it on the lovely Paramount Plus. But I can't even watch it there. I found out this episode is banned. The episode starts pretty usual. Mr. Krabs wakes up all old and crusty. Mr. Krabs is nasty and has eight chins. Pearl has made him breakfast fully made of bran, even going as far as the fork and orange to be made of it. Bran is the stereotypical geriatric meal. Pearl gives him his pill, which is larger than a watermelon. As Mr. Krabs feels down in the dumps, he asks his daughter if he's old, and she definitely doesn't deny it. So right away in the episode, it got me thinking, how old is Mr. Krabs exactly? I know the title is just a joke, it's a naming pun. Nowhere does it state Mr. Krabs is actually having a midlife crisis. But that led me to the question, how old is Mr. Krabs? He's 72 as per his driver's license in a different episode. So midlife would then imply he can live up to 144 years old. Can Krabs live that long? What kind of crab is Mr. Krabs? So many questions. Apparently Mr. Krabs is a crimson sea crab. Don't know how credible that is, but crimson sea crabs live up to 12 years. The crab with the longest lifespan is a Japanese spider crab with a lifespan of 100 years. So even still, the math does not work out. It's honestly besides the point, it's not that important. Mr. Krabs goes off to work, and there's a few jokes about how he is assisted across the road, going slow and leaving your blinker on, and then a joke about waiting in line for the cemetery. There's a joke about how he wants to join kids in a game of ball, but that just comes across super creepy. At the Krusty Krab, Mr. Krabs is compared to an old stale burger. He uses his go-go gadget extendo arm and grabs the burger from the kid's tray, and then he eats it. And the line of dialogue he says afterwards lends itself to the Krabby Patties is crab meat theory. So that's what I taste like. But that's not this video. Patrick comes into the Krusty Krab revealing his and SpongeBob's plan to party tonight. Mr. Krabs eavesdrops and weasels his way into an invite. So a few funny jokes later. Hanging out? Yes. Mr. Krabs has to pass the secret handshake test, which he does, and thus he is invited. They arrive fashionably late to Mr. Krabs' house and then ask each other if they are ready to party. Eight times. Ready to party? Are you ready to party, Mr. Krabs? I'm ready to party! After they discuss their mode of transportation, SpongeBob calls it a chick magnet. Only the most powerful chick magnet in town. It's very rare that anything involving romance is ever mentioned in SpongeBob, let alone from SpongeBob himself. Then Mr. Krabs calls it a chick repellent. It's more like a chick repellent! Nothing inherently dirty about it, just kind of weird coming from SpongeBob. They arrive to their destination called The Wash. Mr. Crab says, They sure are giving these clubs some crazy names. We haven't really hit anything that dirty yet, but the mere mention of a club in a kid's show, especially SpongeBob, already gives it a little bit older of a theme. Then Mr. Krabs confesses. He hasn't been on the scene for quite a while. So again, does he mean dating scene? Or is he talking about getting freaky deaky with the fishies? Maybe both. Probably both. Okay, so they bust in. SpongeBob says whatever. Patrick says whatever. What Mr. Krabs says is perhaps the most vulgar thing in a kid's cartoon. Any part in this dog? Did you understand that? So I have to watch what I say because YouTube and all. But he asks if there are any adult videos in that store. Listen again. Any part in this dog? Okay. Wow. No, I'm kidding, I fooled you. It does sound like that, but what he actually says is any port in a storm, which was my nickname in college. Any port in a storm! So Mr. Krabs is a sailor. This is just typical sailor lingo, right? In case you don't understand this phrase, it means to dock your boat in whatever port in a hurry because of the storm. I mean, that's the literal definition. It's not necessarily always used in a sexual context. 
However, it most commonly means you're willing to accept lower than your desires or lower your standards in desperation or under pressure. So it turns out the wash is actually a laundromat. What they do for fun is watch the clothes spin in the machine. SpongeBob and Patrick cheer kinda questionably. Now just listen to the audio. I may be reaching, but this was intentional. I'm pretty sure of it. They sound, say, rather overjoyed is how I'll put it. After it ends, SpongeBob offers another rent cycle as he's buying. Mr. Krabs declines with this joke. He loves staring at delegates as much as the next guy. Another pretty in-your-face joke about underwear. He then follows it up with saying he thought that he would be seeing the nightlife. That could also imply a multitude of things. And then he follows that up with this. Something that'll give me that wild and crazy hot-blooded feeling, if you know what I mean. Something that will give me that wilding, crazy, hot-blooded feeling, if you know what I mean. SpongeBob says he knows what he means, and reveals that this is only stop number one of their night of debauchery. Debauchery! DEBAUCHERY! Again, debauchery is not just a word I would use in a SpongeBob episode. Let me read you the Merriam-Webster definition. Extreme indulgence in bodily pleasures and especially sexual pleasures. Behavior involving sex, drugs, alcohol, etc. that is often considered immoral. Not the most PG word. Of course, no kid will know what that means, and honestly, not sure if most teenagers would. Mr. Krabs is then disappointed once again after they arrive at their second stop, underneath the highway to pick up trash. They then go on the montage of the iconic, Are you feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? Feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? Are you feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? Art thou feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? You feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? One boring thing after another, Mr. Krabs finally quits. He gets angry and calls SpongeBob and Patrick nerds and a bunch of other stuff. Mr. Krabs finally walks away from them. Patrick uses some reverse psychology. Gonna miss the panty raid. This piques Mr. Krabs' perverted interests. It's also extremely out of character for both SpongeBob and Patrick to express any sort of interest in females. It's such a sudden shift for both of the characters. So in case the kids didn't understand what a panty raid was, which I for one definitely did as a kid, Mr. Krabs and Patrick glaringly spell it out. About raiding their dressers for their underpants, right? Oh yeah. Mr. Krabs has never been more excited in his life. They climb into a house with SpongeBob revealing they quote, score here all the time. They sneak through the house and make it to the dresser where they steal women's underwear. Mr. Krabs holds them up high and proud. Surprise! The big joke of the episode is that Mr. Krabs steals his own mother's underpants. Uh, yuck? She grounds him and he ends up in his childhood room. SpongeBob apologizes and Mr. Krabs says at least he feels younger. I was looking at the details of the room and couldn't help but notice a covered up magazine or paper entitled Wacky. Could it be a play on Mad Magazine? Absolutely. However, could it imply whacking something? Given the context of the episode, I wouldn't be surprised. So now we're through the episode. It's a prime example of naughty, wouldn't you agree? The only other episode that I would consider naughty is Sailor Mouth, where SpongeBob and Patrick swear the entire episode and is bleeped out with other noises. Yeah, it's pretty bad in the context of a kid's show. However, you never hear them really swear, and the lesson by the end is to not swear. It's a pretty innocent episode, but you can definitely tell what words they are bleeping out. Another episode that is naughty, and I'm using the word naughty kind of loosely, is Nasty Patty. That's the episode where SpongeBob and Mr. Krabs think they kill the health inspector. It's not naughty in the same sense as the other two episodes, but it's pretty dark in concept. I'm not the only person to think this episode crossed a few boundaries. This episode is banned. Nickelodeon themselves deem this episode too controversial. Did it deserve a ban? No. Come on. There's more adult jokes than usual, but seriously, this is SpongeBob. Everyone is simply too sensitive. You know what? On the topic of politics... Wait, hold on. I'm hearing now. I need to stop talking. I'm getting controversial. They're telling me to stick to the script. Okay, looking at all the other banned or at least controversial episodes, this one does make the most sense to take out of rotation. The Great Snail Race is one of those controversial episodes. It's controversial because SpongeBob is a little too hard on Gary to win the race. So it's considered animal abuse. Um, uh, okay. 
SpongeBob is a sea sponge, I think it's kind of an even playing field. Rockabye Bivalvi is another band episode. In this episode, SpongeBob and Patrick raise a baby clam. They just so happen to imitate a husband and a wife and showing the hardship of raising a child. The claim was that they were a gay couple. I'm telling you, you'll only think of that if you're looking for stuff to whine about. I remember watching this episode when I was young and this concept never crossed my mind. I'm pretty sure it's not brainwashing the masses. You know what is though? Restricting what kids are allowed to watch so they, what's with the vaudeville hook? Just One Bite, another controversial episode, depicts Squidward with an eating addiction. Uh-huh. I'm pretty sure it was done for the joke that it's completely out of Squidward's personality to eat a bunch of crappy patties. Pretty sure there's no subliminal messaging in that one. So in comparison with all these other episodes, does midlife crustacean deserve to be banned? Well, you know my stance. I don't think any of them should be banned. Midlife crustacean is the only one of the controversial ones, besides Sailor Mouth, where the controversial concept or scene is actually right there in the episode. It isn't implied like Squidward's supposed eating addiction. I can understand a parent's concern with this episode. They are stealing females' underwear. And then what are the implications of what they will do with them afterwards? There's no subliminal messaging with this one. It's just right there in your face. So like I said, I do kind of understand the ban. But now I have to ask, if this episode is so bad and lewd, why is One Course Meal still an episode that doesn't raise any problems for Nickelodeon? In that episode, Mr. Krabs mentally tortures and bullies Plankton until the point where he wants to unalive. On the same topic, if midlife crustacean is so bad it has to be removed from the SpongeBob catalog, why are certain episodes of other shows still on Paramount Plus? The entire run of Ren and Stimpy is a show laden with abuse, or other certain shows from that time like Rocco's Modern Life. There's a lot of adult humor in that show. I guess my point is, hold the same punishment for everything else. If this episode has to get banned, ban the other ones. If shows like Ren and Stimpy are good to go, then Midlife Crustacean is fine. This was a fantastic episode and one I remember fondly as a kid. It was one of the more iconic episodes to me, but now it's stripped from the series. What is your opinion on it? Thank you for watching the video. I plan on doing more videos like this, so make sure you hit the subscribe button. Also, by the way, thank you very, very much for 20,000 subscribers. Just a mere four weeks ago, I was asking for 1,000, and I boosted way up there. So thank you very much. I couldn't have done it without myself, actually. If it hadn't been for me, I would have never made videos. Thank you all for subscribing.